Hello everyone, welcome back to Every Node in Godot Used and Explained. Today we are going to take a look at every body in Godot. Uh, specifically, we're doing every body 2D. Every 3D body will be its own video. Now, if I come in and take a look at our 2D bodies, we only have four nodes. And you might think, wow, this is going to be a very short video then. Well, the thing about 2D body nodes, if I add one of them to my scene now, we'll do a rigid body 2D. You'll notice there's a warning. It says there are other nodes we're going to need to make this work. So while we are looking at every body today, we're also going to have to look at collision shapes and we're going to have to look at ways to display things. So something like a sprite. So we're going to use a handful of these nodes today. And basically this is the make a 2D game episode. If you're new to the series, the way things work is I have a showroom scene. I'm going to drag a node in and then we're going to look at how it works. We're going to talk about it. And then we're going to head over to the game scene and we're going to make a game using these nodes. And you might wonder what game are we making today? Well, well, that's the fun part i'm not going to tell you but i'd love it if you told me so keep an eye out and when you think you know what game we are making go ahead and drop it in the comments the reason i do this is one because i think it's fun but two this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial i don't want you to be following along i just want to focus on the nodes so that's the plan let's jump in and just add our nodes to our scene so we have a static body an animatable body a rigid body and a character body. And you will notice we added four nodes and we have four errors already. We haven't done anything and there's already an issue. And if I play this game, perhaps unsurprisingly, nothing happens and nothing's visible. Before we fix that, let's talk about this inheritance again. So we are dealing with a node and then we're dealing with a canvas item. So we already looked at the control node tree, but the node 2D tree also inherits from canvas item. So you'll see down here in the description, this is the abstract base class for everything in 2D space. The node 2D is specifically 2D game objects, and it mentions position, rotation, scale, and Z index. And so in here, we have a bunch of things, but we have our collision objects, which implies that there's going to be some physics we're dealing with. And actually, you'll see here, physics body 2D, and finally, our bodies we're looking at today. So just by looking at this tree, we can deduce a few things. We're going to be handling collisions and we're going to be dealing with physics because we are inheriting from a collision object and a physics body. Now, if I come into the node 2D here, you'll see that we have a transform. This is position, rotation, and scale. And the important thing here is that these will inherit. So I'm going to quickly add just an image to this. So as I move this, this image will change. But you see, if I come in here to this icon, the transform still says it's at zero, zero. And that is because this one is it inheriting its location from the showroom scene. So if I were to add a script here, um, you can control to drag in a object and then we will just say ready uh, two things i can do i can do icon dot position and then i can do icon dot global position and if i print these we'll get two different things our position is zero zero but our global position is 381 373 and so that's because the showroom scene have a position of 381 373 and that is inherited down the tree so if i were to come and i were to actually make a duplicate of this icon i move it somewhere and then i put it inside and then i come back to my script and instead of icon we say icon two so we'll just delete that and then we rerun this thing what's going to happen is it's going to give us a position that is relative to icon one and a global position that is relative to the world space so that is something you want to keep straight in scripting and we're not going to get too advanced in this particular game but you can get very confused very quickly if you're using the wrong one so that was a quick intro to transforms. Uh, we'll continue to use them as we need them. And uh, let's then try to fix these warnings. So I have my static body here. We'll go ahead and pull this out. And I am going to just see what the warning says. This node has no shape. It cannot collide or interact with other objects. Consider adding a collision shape 2D or collision polygon 2D as a child to define the shape. So I'm going to go ahead and add, and I'm going to do a collision 
shape 2d or collision poly and we'll do a shape for now and now this is fixed but this one has a warning and it says node configuration warning a shape must be provided for collision shape 2d to function so we have to come over to this shape and we get to pick a shape so we're going to do a primitive i'm going to say this is a rectangle shape it is 20 by 20 and now you see we finally have something showing up here so there is this little blue rectangle so we'll change that to something bigger like 100 by 100 and now we have a blue rectangle on our static body so i rerun this scene we will see that there is a collision rectangle sitting here and that is because in the debugging settings i have visible collision shapes if i turn this off and i run this you'll see that we don't have anything at all even though this has been fixed it is still not very useful to us because it is a invisible collider thing really quick let's just add a collision shape to the rest of these and you'll notice we have multiple collision shapes showing up we'll space these things out and if i grab this and start moving i'm actually pulling the collision shape i'm not pulling the character body if i click on this you'll see this little thing is telling me the transform is here if i click on this the transforms here an easy way to fix that for these kind of nodes is you come over here to this icon uh, there's two there's a lock icon and there is a a little group select thing icon this one if you hover over it says it makes the nodes children not selectable so i'm going to turn that on for all of these so now when i click on this to move it you'll see it is highlighting my character body 2d not my collision shape so i click and drag and the character body moves with the collision shape underneath uh, the other icon if i don't want to be able to click on this at all so let's say i click here you see it's selecting the rigid body if i want to select the one underneath it i could lock this guy now it'll not be selectable if i click here we're getting the animatable body because that was underneath and this just cannot be selected at all so that is a way to say i don't want to select the children i want to select the parent or i don't want to select this at all this is something i'm not working on don't let me touch it why don't we jump in and actually introduce these bodies? And because these are so similar, I'm gonna take a few passes instead of introducing them one at a time. Let's just look at them generally to start. We have the static body is that first one. And as the name implies, it is a body and it is static. It is teleported to a new position when it moves. So this thing is like a wall or a floor. You place it and you don't touch it. There's no physics simulation happening. And so you'll notice it actually mentions if you want to move things, you're going to want an animatable body, which inherits from static body, but it affects other bodies in its path. So there's those two are your more or less static bodies, but then you have a rigid body, which is moved by physics simulation. And it actually says here, it cannot be controlled directly. You must apply forces to it. But as you see here in the methods, we can actually apply forces and impulses to these bodies in order to move them. Coming back then, we have this rigid body, which cannot be controlled directly. So what if we do want to control things directly? Well, that's where we get to our final body, which is the character body. And this is kind of the opposite of the rigid body. As you notice here, top line, it is moved by a script. So let's start with the one that was falling was the rigid body. And the one it was landing on was the static body. So we're going to turn off these other two and we're going to play with these. Everything is using a collision shape to define the area of collision so we'll put this down to make kind of like a floor and then we'll play this again and we'll see that this one is falling and landing coming back to the static body we'll see there is a physics material and this is actually a physics material override so we'll do a new physics material there isn't a ton here uh, there's an absorbent a bounce a friction and a roughness so if we were to turn the bounciness all the way up what i would expect is this will bounce forever let's see what happens run the scene and it is bouncing. But worryingly, it looks like it's losing momentum as it bounces. What is wrong here? Well, it turns out if you come into the rigid body, and uh, if I sound frustrated, it's because I was working on a project and this screwed me over for a long time. Uh, there are things you can set like a velocity damping, basically air friction. It slows your body down over time. If I come here, you'll see that the damping is set to zero, so there shouldn't be any. But if I mouse over this, it'll mention something about project settings, physics 2D, default linear damp. So if I go to the project settings and I go to physics 2D, there is gravity and that's it. 
you actually have to go to the advanced settings and I don't know why they did this, but you by default have your object slowed to a stop without being told and this is under an advanced tab. So you need to set this to zero if you're making a space game or something similar. And so if I do that, theoretically, this should now bounce forever. So we'll put my mouse here and it is bouncing to the same height. And we'll see that the physics simulation isn't perfect. It went flying off. An interesting thing here is absorbent. So this is basically now made of rubber. What if I wanted to say that my rigid body is actually the opposite? It's made of like a Play-Doh or, or clay or something where it'll fall and stick. I can change the bounciness to one and set this to absorbent, which means instead of adding, it subtracts. So now uh, this other one is a bounciness of one, but this is a bounciness of taking away one. And if I play it, it's going to fall and stick again. Just because this is bouncy doesn't mean this will bounce. And then the friction and roughness tell you how well this is going to slide. So at this point, we are, I think, ready to start working on the actual game. So let's go ahead and add some static bodies as platforms. We will do a static because the platform doesn't move. So static body. And then we will add a collision shape again. Um, and actually, I'm going to mix things up and do a collision polygon. And so these ones are cool. You actually have this little editing option that popped up. So if I zoom in on this, we'll see that we can draw some points to define our polygon here. So if I go and I close this shape, we now have a collision shape that is fully custom, as opposed to the standard collision shape where you do something like a circle. So that is kind of a neat way to do colliders that are a little bit more precise at the cost of performance. Um, and you can have multiple colliders, by the way. So you can have both of these and that works just fine. Unfortunately, we actually do need to jump back into the showroom one more time because even though I have this lovely platform, this is only visible if the debugging options are on and we want to show something. So we need to have this render even when we are not debugging. I'm going to create a couple more of these rigid bodies and then we are going to attach a couple different options for our graphics. We already worked with control nodes previously, and I used the color rectangle node for creating shapes and things. And you might think, hey, this is a control node that is not going to work. Uh, but the thing is, control nodes actually have a transform. As this moves, the color rectangle will move with it. If you wanted to have a button attached to a player or an object, you can do that. So that's kind of a neat trick. But generally, that's not how we're going to do these things. Why don't we take a look at some of our other options? The classic thing to do is to drag this icon in. And you'll notice it actually says adding sprite 2D. Now if I play, this is actually going to overlap here. And the reason for that is the collision shape defines the shape of the collision. The visible image does not. You want to make sure that either the sprite is sized to the collision shape or the collision shape is sized to the sprite. You do not automatically get collisions based on your images. Our next option is going to be a line 2D. So for this one, you can come in and you have this little option here to click to place a point. And as you draw, and we'll give this a little bit of a unique shape, we get some lines. And I'm going to come and check closed. And there we go. And there are some options here for capping. So I can change this to say we want the short these joints to be beveled or fully round and that's smooth. So this is a really cool way to do some vector graphics if you want to play with that. Uh, I think one of the more common uses for this is actually going to be to come down and change the texture. You can set something like tire tracks and turn this into a, a tire renderer following a vehicle, for example. Same thing with gradient. You can change the color uh, from one side to the other. So we're just going to leave that white, but that is our line renderer. Uh, and then if you want a closed version of the same thing, that is going to be a polygon 2D. So I can do the same thing. And this time as I am drawing, you'll notice I don't have a line drawn right away. But when I get this thing finished, uh, you'll see it fills in. And we'll add a point here and make this like a little star thing. So there we go. There are a few different options for rendering. And here's another sprite. We'll give it a noise 2D. Why not? Once again, you see these all drop and they land. So I'm actually just going to use the line 2D to start because I don't really feel like going to an external program quite yet. And I will make my platform. So here's our line 2D. I'm going to change the capping behavior. I want this to be rounded because I don't want to have any sharp corners. Uh, we're going to turn on the grid and then we are going to draw this. 
Yeah, that's good enough. So I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to just go and I'm going to copy this value now and I'm going to come back to our collision polygon and then I'm going to simply paste this in and now we have the exact same shape. And you'll notice this is purple. That's actually because this turned out to be a little bit concave. So if I pull this down, you'll see the whole thing's red. That means it is one instead of being broken up into two. Just in general, uh, not just Godot, but all game engines really don't like concave shapes. So if you can keep it convex, it's just a little bit nicer. And there we are. Happy little platform. But once again, we're going to lock the children so we can move all of these together. And then we are going to duplicate this and we're going to put a few of these in. So we could add a rigid body 2D and make something like a ball that's going to roll down these platforms. The problem here is this isn't actually controllable. And so we're going to want to give the player some way of controlling our object. But I think it's time we switch our focus then back to the character body 2D. Now, as we've seen before, this doesn't actually do anything right now. It is basically just a static body. And you notice this stopped when it hit it. So I'm going to attach a script to this. And there are a couple of options we can do. I'm going to make this a built-in, which basically means it doesn't show up in the file system. It's just a part of the scene. Typically, you don't want that, especially for big scripts. But this is just a small example. Uh, so I'm going to also come and check this template option. And you'll notice it gives us a few options. For certain scripts, like the character body 2D, you actually get a template script that starts you off with a working game of some sort. So you'll see we are handling jump and we are handling movement. I'm just going to replace these with my own options. I don't think I had a jump, but I did have a shoot. So we're going to pretend that that was jump. And then we're going to change this to left and we're going to change this to right. Without really doing anything, we have a fully working character controller. So if I run this scene, we'll see that we are trapped by the rigid bodies. So let's just delete those and then <laughs> run that again. Uh, we will see that we can move and we can jump. So I'm going to give myself a sprite. Why not just slap the Godot icon on here? And then we now have a character with a sprite. Now, one thing, these are constants, but I'm actually going to turn these into export variables. And uh, I'm just going to leave it all caps, even though that's not really how naming works, because now I can update these inside the editor itself. So if I move this over, we'll see that we are moving and jumping. And I can actually change this number to something like negative a thousand and suddenly we jump much higher i didn't reload the scene when i did that and i can change these values and they immediately update so we'll just take this character as is we'll copy him over and we will put him in our game scene and then the only modification i'm going to make is i'm going to come in here and i'm going to say we don't need to jump if we are pressing a button we're going to jump automatically and now we have our character jumping. Because I change these to external, I can tweak them. So I think that's going to be negative 600, and that's going to be 500. Picking random numbers off the top of my head. And you'll see we are stuck in between these uh, various platforms because we can't go through them. So we need to find a way to get the player to go through the platform vertically and then land on top. So let's go take a look at the collision shapes themselves and see if there's something that can help us here. So we do have a disabled option and we can turn these on and off, you know, maybe based on if this is moving up or down. Except below this, you see there's another option called one-way collision. This one mentions something about top or bottom uh, when you're here in the collision shape 2D. That's because there's a lot of different shapes. But if I come back to the collision polygon we made, it actually specifically says this is based on the rotation and it only is the edges that face up. So that is actually exactly what we want. I'm going to come back around. I'm going to select all of these collision polygons and then I'm going to check that box. And what I expect is suddenly we will be having a bunch of one-way platforms instead of two-way platforms. And now we see we are jumping and landing on the platforms above. And we can fall back down to the bottom. I think one quick thing I want to add is I'd like to wrap around the screen instead of going off the end of it. This is pretty easy to do. You just uh, check if you're off on one side and then put yourself back on the other side. At this point, I thought it would be fun to add a couple of images and textures to this. I added a audio stream player to the character, and then I also uh, gave him a uh, ugly little doodle body and set up a nine patch rack, which was a control node just to have an easy background. I didn't feel like implementing scrolling for this one. We now have this game, but you'll notice we can jump off the screen. And that's not actually the only issue. If I maximize this, we'll see that we 
don't have any sort of scaling. So not only can we jump off the screen, but we can resize the screen incorrectly. And so that is an issue we're going to need to fix. We may want to actually move the viewport by attaching a camera to the character. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a camera to the on and I'm going to give this its own episode. So we're just going to do a couple quick things with this. The camera is now following the character, which is not what we want. We actually want this to for the most part, not follow, uh, maybe just vertically, not horizontally. You might think, well, let's move this off and then attach a script. But actually, the camera has a lot of really cool settings here. Coming in, we have some things like limits and drags and smoothing. So the limit tells you how far can this move. So to the left, we actually want it to go zero pixels. We don't want it ever to go past this one. And on the right, we don't want it to go past this 800. So we're going to set this to 800. And now when I run this, we'll see that we are following the character vertically, but we are no longer moving horizontally, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to turn this off because we can actually visualize all these things. So under this editor setting, we can draw the limits and the drag margin. This green one is our limit. So you see the camera can't go past this anymore. And then our drag margin is this little box. A vertical drag margin means that we will only move when the character leaves this box. And so now the character can move a little bit inside the box before the camera starts moving. I'm actually going to change this one all the way to the full height, and then I'm going to change the top to just 0.4. When we move up, the camera will move up, but when we move down, the camera doesn't move down. So I can fall all the way back down to here, and the camera doesn't move, uh, which is kind of cool. Of course, if I fall all the way off, the camera will follow, and that's something we're going to want to fix. For now, we can at least have a camera that moves up but not down. So let's talk scaling real quick. There are a couple options here under the display window stretch mode. You see this is disabled and that's why we're getting that kind of awful behavior. You don't want to stick with this one. So we have canvas items versus viewport. Uh, I'm going to pick viewport first. And if you remember, these here are vectors. There is no pixel. Well, if I go and I play this game, and then I maximize this, you'll actually see there are pixels here. You can clearly see these edges, and these are not the pixel size of my monitor. These are larger. Essentially, viewport scaling is the equivalent to taking a screenshot and then stretching it, making it larger, uh, versus canvas item scaling will actually go and render this natively at a higher resolution. So one thing I did when I created this little gadoodle sprite is I'm actually at a quarter scale. And so this is how big the actual pixels are in this. And so because I have it shrunk down, when I make it bigger, you'll see that we don't really see any pixels on this. It is still being rendered uh, at a sub pixel resolution, which is what we want there. So we now have these objects. Uh, you can see if you zoom way in, you can see the pixels just on my monitor, but you can't see any pixels in the game. Uh, there's no chunky pixels here. While we're doing this, I'm going to actually make this a little bit taller, I think. I'm going to then change my width and height override to make this small, but it's rendering at a higher pixel native resolution. At this point, we have a mostly working game. Uh, the one thing we want is for the player to die when they fall out of the bottom of the screen. So I have a little death zone here. Uh, it's currently being drawn inside the screen, but I'll move it down a tiny bit. But right now, this is just a line 2D and it doesn't do anything. Uh, what could we use to detect things? We've covered a lot of these bodies so far, but there's a final collision object that isn't a body, and that is the area. And so this one specifically says it detects other collision objects going in or out. If we have an area 2D, this will also require a collision shape. And when it has a collision shape, we'll see that there are some signals that it'll emit when a area entered or a body entered. So if we use the body entered signal, we can pretty clearly detect when our player has fallen below this point. I'll add an area 2D to this with a collision shape and this will be a rectangle and we'll want it to be the width of the screen and the height doesn't really matter so that is going to be 800 wide and the height is fine and so now we have this collider here within this little red rectangle and this will tell us when our character entered so the question is how do we detect the character specifically uh, we're going to try to emit this body entered i'm actually connected to the character itself um, i'm going to say on death zone entered so I'm doing a quick check to see if we are dealing with the player. If so, we are going to set a is dead variable, which will just turn them off, but uh, keep them existing so we don't lose the camera. And then we will queue free any other body that comes in. So the platforms will disappear. 
So if I hit run on this, we'll see that this platform is here. And as I move, this platform will follow me. And you notice that these green ones disappear when they hit it. And if I fall, I will also disappear. So I did set a follow distance on this. It has a simple script. So I'll just change that to, we'll say 600 to move it outside the screen. And now we don't see it, but it is continuing to work. At this point, it's pretty clear what game we're making. This is Doodle Jump, and we are missing a couple things. I'm not going to add all these platforms and power ups, but one thing we do have in the actual Doodle Jump game is we have a moving platform. And then, two, we have these enemies that go back and forth, and you actually can shoot. Oh, I didn't know you can aim. Um, so, and then you can press space to shoot. So, we are going to add the option to shoot as well as adding the option to have a moving platform so let's get those final two things into the game so the last couple things i want to do i'm going to add an enemy and we want him to be able to move side to side and then we want to be able to shoot him uh, the other thing is we do want to have a moving platform so coming back to the showroom scene we can do that pretty easily by setting up a static body and i added a marker 2d these are simply just a visualization tool that tells you where a node 2d is and then i have a little script that uses a tween so tweens are kind of fun they can take a value like the position and they can smoothly move it so you can do this if you don't need a full animation player so running this scene we'll see that this moves side to side now you'll notice worryingly my character doesn't move when the platform moves and that's because i am using the static body so if i right click on this you can go to change type and i'm going to change this to an animatable body now, I do want to double check because I have a script attached to this. I want to make sure this extends from something that makes sense. So static body does work because animatable is from a static. And now you see we get this for free. So that's the difference between static and animatable is that the physics is actually being processed. Okay, so now I have the moving platform is moved over. I just added the same one and changed the color. And then farther up, we will have a cute little enemy guy I made. And I used only the Godot graphics for this one. So this guy is not actually made from a sprite. Uh, he's Polygon 2Ds and a couple line renderers. For the player bullet then, we're going to use the final body, which was the rigid body, of course. Uh, we don't have one of those in the game yet. So I'm going to actually need to make a new scene for this because this is something we will have to instance uh, in order to shoot. So we'll do a new scene. We will make it a 2D scene, rigid body. And I'm going to actually set this as the main scene root, uh, get rid of the no TD. And so this is going to be our bullet. And it's going to have a collision shape, which is going to be a circle. And then it is also going to have our bullet uh, sprite image that is here. So we'll just make sure that transform is reset. So that's a bullet here, but you see it's falling down. I actually want it to move up. So I'm going to come in here. You see there's a lot of settings. I'm going to change the gravity scale to zero because we don't want gravity. And then we don't need a constant force, but we do want a starting velocity. So I'm going to change this to... Uh, we'll try 200 per second, see how fast that is. And that is pretty slow. We'll go... 600 per second and that seems pretty good Let's get rid of this and we now have a bullet you notice we have some weird issues going on we are colliding with our own bullets but also when i move to the side you'll see they kind of move with us a little bit that's because they are a child of our node we don't want that so there's a fun little trick i found where if you add a node not a node 2d but just a node uh, this does not have a transform so if i call this bullets and i drag it into my script and then instead of adding as a child to our character we add a child to the bullets this will actually break the relationship as far as the transform and we actually do need to set the bullets position uh, what's happening is this being spawned somewhere else so and so now you see we are creating bullets and they are not following us. So that's great. But there are a number of other issues. I'm getting pushed around by my own bullets. And you can see this enemy here just goes and disappears all of a sudden. We didn't talk about the layers or masks yet. This is the final thing in this game. Uh, technically, the game is working. There are just a lot of weird issues. I'm going to come into this enemy we see. And if I open up the collision object, there are these options down here. And we're sitting on the default. So you can actually open up your collision layers and you can change the names. And so I've already done this. We have our physics interactions is going to be layer one and then we'll have the player and then the enemies and then the bullet. 
And it's important to remember, Godot does not have physics. It has a physics simulation. So the difference there is a physics simulation is like a sporting event. You have a bunch of rules and everything is trying to follow those rules but nobody's wearing any jerseys. So this bad guy goes and hits this platform and thinks, oh, I just collided with a bullet. And because the script says, when you hit a bullet, you die, it is dying when it hits a platform. And so we could change the script and try to be smarter within that script itself, but we don't need to because we can just uh, tell the enemy that, no, that was not a bullet. You don't need to collide with it. And so these enemies actually are areas, so it doesn't make sense for them to be in the physics layer at all. And so the layer is where you are. So we're gonna come to the enemy and we're gonna check that box for these enemies we're going to come down to the player we're going to do the same thing you are a physics object you're going to keep interacting but you are also a player so we check that box and then we do the same thing with the bullet we say the bullet is not a physics object it doesn't need to interact with anything else it just needs to interact with the enemies so you are a bullet and so now all of these are sorted into the proper category of what they are. But you'll see we're still not colliding with a lot of things. The bullets are going straight through the enemy. And that's where the next stage comes in. Uh, the first step was, what am I? The second step is, what do I care about? So the enemy is looking for two things. It is going to be looking for the player so that it can kill the player. And it's going to be looking for the bullet so that it can uh, die if it gets hit by a bullet. That is just the way this particular script is set up. Uh, you could have the bullet looking for the enemy if you wanted to do that instead. Uh, that's just this one. And then the player is not really looking for much of anything. Um, there is a kill zone down here I forgot to select. So this one is actually set up correctly already. It's looking for physics objects. Uh, the platforms aren't in their own category. And then it's also going to look for the player, which might be a bit redundant, but I'd rather have more than less. So now that that's selected, we'll see that our player is moving. If we hit the enemy, we actually did freeze, and then we also shot uh, before we died. So that killed the enemy. So that appears to be working just fine. Uh, we were able to set up our masks to say, what am I looking for? Our layers to say what I am. And now everything knows its role. Uh, we have successfully given everybody a jersey to wear. And if I fall off, you'll see that I do stop and die. So all of that is working great. Uh, with that, I think we are actually done with the game. Uh, there's a lot more that I could do. You'll see that I didn't use any procedural generation. I just threw some platforms in the game. Uh, that was deliberate. I don't want these videos to be massive, and I will be doing a lot more stuff going forward. I already mentioned I'm going to be doing a dedicated video with uh, cameras and probably lights as well, and then I'm going to do another one with noise, uh, and then all the other notes we haven't covered, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I hope that that was interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought. I'd love to hear your feedback. I will definitely be doing more of these going forwards. So yeah, this has been every 2D body used and explained. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.